My name is Harmony. My name is Tony Ann. My name is Alex. I was sexually assaulted. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. And I'm a survivor. Hi, I'm Kristen Stewart. The issue of acquaintance rape has been very important to me ever since I played a survivor of sexual assault in a movie called Speak. Playing someone whose world is turned upside down because of a brutal rape really forced me to understand what a devastating effect acquaintance rape has on a young woman. We've all heard horror stories of women who are yanked into dark alleys and then assaulted and raped by a stranger, but I'm sure that you're thinking that that would never happen to you. The truth is most rapes occur with someone that you know. Sometimes it's a friend or someone you've just met. It could even be a boyfriend. This is called acquaintance rape. Acquaintance rape is very, very common. Uh, in the vast majority of cases, you'll know your assailant. Um, that will be somebody that you've had a relationship with, maybe you're in a relationship with, maybe you've had sex with this person before, and at, at this point, you're saying no, and, and he's saying yes. I went on a summer program, and I had a boyfriend, and I liked him. He was a friend of mine that was on one of the sports teams at my school. One of my friends set us up on a blind date. It was somebody that she knew. Under the sort of the umbrella of acquaintance rape, you have what we call date rape. We went out, and um, he was supposed to bring me back home, but he didn't. He drove to an isolated parking lot, and he assaulted me. He started like, trying to touch me, and I didn't want to go any further, and I told him I didn't want to, but he didn't care. He just kept doing what he wanted to do to me, and What's so scary about it is that it was somebody that I knew and I thought I could trust. Unfortunately, Tony's story is not uncommon. The shocking reality is that college women are four times more likely to be sexually assaulted than the general population. It was my first week of school and it was my first year into college. I've always been a nice person. I've always, not exactly been flirty, but I've always opened myself up to others. Sometimes all of this makes it hard to follow the rules that you've heard before. So how can you be more aware? How do you help a friend? Freshman year is full of fun and parties, and Sam, who had been one of the most popular girls in her high school, was taking it all in. But after just three months on campus, her life changed forever. Shortly before winter break, Sam and her new best friend, Nicole, were waiting to go into class one day when two frat guys noticed them and came over to say hi. The boys flirted with them and Sam and Nicole flirted back. Next thing you know, they're exchanging numbers and the girls invite them over for a party in their dorm room. So the following week, the guys show up at Sam's dorm with pizza and beer. Everyone's having a good time. Then Brad gets a call. What's that? It's his frat brother. Awesome party going on right now. Sweet! Where? Okay. Sweet. Uh, okay. Right yeah. down the street where? Let's okay. do it. Like, oh, let's go. go. Sam really wants to go and spend more time with Brad, but Nicole wants to call it a night. So, 30 minutes, you guys want to go to the party? You go I, I'm there, of course. Are you kidding me? Okay. We actually have class. I hate to kill the vibe, but I have a, an exam tomorrow. Samantha, you, you coming, all right? Huh? Oh, yeah, well, come on. You can, you're a big girl, you can go by yourself. She can study all night and everything, that's fine, you know? Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, you I always been. I got three exams left. I, I can't go alone, come on. Exactly. Sam does everything she can to try to convince Nicole to come out with her. You should go by yourself. I know, I'm not comfortable by myself. Hey, no, that shouldn't look by yourself. And when Nicole doesn't budge, Sam battles with herself. And ultimately decides keep to go. Keep walking, keep walking. You'll yes. see her again, I promise. Coming. She needs to do it. Let's go. Huh? I'll call you, I'll call you later, okay? Oh, no. Matthew.
Whether you're a drinker or not, you're most likely going to encounter alcohol in college. This may be a surprise to you, but alcohol is the number one date rape drug. It's true. With most sexual assaults in college, alcohol is either being used by the perpetrator or by the victim. If you're intoxicated, you can't legally consent to sex. And did you know that silence, i.e. not saying anything, never equals consent? As students on campus, we are responsible for intersexual sexual violence. We cannot tolerate it, so speak up and help. All right, guys, it's not just up to girls. You too can make a difference. Most guys are good guys, and not all guys are disrespectful to women. But sexual assault is your issue too. If you see a friend acting aggressively or treating someone disrespectfully, it is also okay to call them out on it. One of the most important things is for men to speak to other men about their behavior, to step up and to say, what you're doing is wrong, or why are you giving her another drink? If you see someone acting aggressively, speak up, interrupt this behavior, we need to stop the sexual assault happening in our campus community. Brad and Sam then leave the party, and Brad walks Sam home. They're both drunk. So in this situation, Sam is doing the right things, she's saying no, she wants to go home, and Brad clearly has in his mind that he wants to have sex with her. So he takes her to a party, he plies her with alcohol, he insists on walking her home, so he has this, this plan in his mind of, of what he wants to do. I want to go home and sleep too. I'm going to go to your house. So I'm Please, gonna, I, don't, I don't know, I don't want to I'm going to go to my house after I go to your house. No. Yeah, let me open the door for you. Which one is it? Oh. Yeah. Alright, come on. No, no, no. I can't. Come on. Let me help you let you in. No. Let me help you give let me you in. Key. I'll give you your keys after I let you in, okay? Yeah? Just go. It's fine? Just What is it, this one? Yes. Oh, I guess it's on the first thing. Come on. No, really, I don't think this is a good idea. Please! What? It's not a good idea for you to go into your own apartment? Brad! Brad! Please! Brad, I want to go home by myself. So go home! Go home! Go home! Thank you. Right. Can I make this? Cool. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Cool. It's important to remember that you have the right to stop whenever you want. Even if it feels really embarrassing, you can stop at any time. You don't owe anybody sex. By the time I was 17, by the time I was raped, I was already like confused that I could say no. Like, I didn't realize that I can say no at any time. The next morning, Sam wakes up alone in her dorm room. Things are foggy. She begins to piece together the unpleasant details of the previous night. Meanwhile, across campus, Brad is catching up with his buds. So, dude, we went to this awesome party. It was off the hook. Dude, it was awesome. Uh, you watched it? Man. Rallied up, man. I know you should oh. see Brad. He was there in full force. Nuts, man. I got Sam so wasted. 
up, you know. I gave her a few drinks, gave her a few shots. You know, she started to loosen up and everything. She was into it. Yeah, but it kind of looked like you were more into it than she Jay, was. What, I mean, she was drunk, dude. Jay, what don't you get, man? Oh, okay, okay. So, what happened? What was the details, man? We had a few, few more drinks. I walked her home, you know. We were having such a good time. Why'd you head out? I mean, Sam wanted to be alone, man, so we left. Let's hear what's going on with Sam and Nicole. Okay, Sam, what's going on? I've been calling you, like, all day. God, your place looks like crap. Something wrong? Did I do something? Thanks for bailing on me, Nicole. <laughs> bailing on you? What are you talking about? I told you not to go. Yeah, you told me not to go. Look, you've been talking about Brad like this entire week, so I didn't want to get in the way of anything with you guys. I didn't know what to do. Nicole? Yeah? I think something bad happened. What do you mean? The guys got really wasted in the party, and, um, I was really drunk. What happened? It wasn't good. Um, what do you mean? Brad offered to walk me home, you know? And? I thought he was trying to be a gentleman, and so I let him back into the dorm. Okay. What happened when you got back to the dorm? She, at first, I was like, oh, you, I thought she forgot her keys, you know? And then I was like, oh, damn, I'm not gonna get into the place. Most men don't read. We have an important role in ending violence. Speak up. You didn't actually go home with her. You didn't go... I walked her home. You, you went know, into her place? I. She invited me into her place. Uh, you know, uh... Um, what, what happened? She started kissing me. I mean, what can I say? So she kissed you? Yeah. What? And then... She, that's messed up. She and was really then, it's not like they got and and then. I kissed his cheek and stuff, but that's that's all I wanted to do. I we started kissing, and I, then I don't feel like I had any control over the situation. Nicole, he pulled my panties down, and I pulled them back up, but but then he kept going. Did you have sex with her? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, Dude, we had no, sex. No, What's no, the no, matter with no. You? no. That's really wrong. Are you still no, a virgin? She was, she was wasted. You can't just have sex with a wasted girl, okay? I'm, I'm done talking about this now, okay? Look, I know she was into it. So, you sure she was into it? Yeah, well, I, you know, it took a minute. I had to, like, give her a massage, you know? And he kept going. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I thought... I thought I was saying no, but I wasn't sure. I was really drunk, and I just don't remember what happened. And I'm so sorry, but it was so bad. I, I didn't know what to do. No, that's really messed up. She was up. into it. No, it's ri it's wrong, dude. All right, for the last time, okay? She was into it. Could she even make a decision? Could she even say she wanted she, it or not? She got pulled right, back that, up. That's rape right there. That it's is rape. rape. Yes, that's rape. It's not rape. She tried to pull her panties up. That's rape. No, what? you can't keep doing stuff like this, man. How many times do I have to tell you it was not rape? Like, well, you keep throwing a word like that around, and, you know, I'm going to be in handcuffs. What, what does it matter with you? Go I've been... No, Max, man. More often than not, the survivor thinks she is at fault, that somehow she led the guy on. This is not the case, and that's why it's important to break the silence. Talk about it. Share your experience. Reaching out to friends, faculty, or campus security may seem unbearable, but it's often the thing that will comfort you and save you in the end. There's no shame in being a victim of acquaintance rape. It's not your fault. It is my fault. It is not I your fault. I shouldn't have let him back into the apartment. He's a jerk. He's an asshole. It's important to know that rapists are serial perpetrators. That means that he or she is likely to do it again. 
If you've been raped, well, there is nothing you can do to reverse what has happened. You can seek justice and help keep it from happening to someone else. Reporting an assault is the best way to stop it from happening again. But just remember that either way, it's the victim's decision whether or not to report it. We can't get away with this. We have to report this. We should tell this brat. No. We should tell the police. No, yes. I just don't want to think about it anymore. It's over and I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to I'll think about it. I'll go with you. You can't get away with this. This can happen to anyone, no matter your race, gender, ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation. You need to support someone who has been a victim. If, if a family member or friend comes to you and, and they are sharing their experience, the most important thing you can do is to believe them. You listen, um, that you hear what they're saying, that you, you respect the decisions that they make, that, that you um, act with great empathy. I'll be with you, okay? I'm here. It's not your fault. I'm here for you. I was sexually assaulted and that it, things for me were totally going to be different and my life was going to be forever changed. It was never going to be easy for me again to have a relationship with anybody. And I, um, I stopped going out on the weekends and um, I was also really depressed. I was really sad. But to this day I'm still really angry. Like I've healed a lot. It's been seven years, but I'm really angry when I hear about other women. I was very, I was having panic attacks and I was very anxious and like I didn't want to date anybody. I was afraid to like date anybody. The hardest part about um, recovering from sexual assault has been to become sexual again. That has been so, so painful. And um, it took like, it took a really, really